everyone on now. So we'll kick off and uh, into the awards ceremony. Um, so this is uh, UAVNZ's inaugural award ceremony. We've um, not uh, run any, to my knowledge, in the past, and we felt that it was necessary to um, reward uh, individuals who were uh, going to great extents of uh, professionalism or contributing in other ways towards the uh, sector. So we've decided to create a number of awards um, and I will introduce each award and what the basis for the award is. And then I will hand over to uh, Kevin England, uh, Chair, uh, sorry, President of Aviation New Zealand to announce who the winner for each award is. When we do that, I will be bringing up the user profiles for uh, the award recipients because it's virtual. We're not gonna have that interaction. They can't come up for a handshake, but you can find their profile on the side um, where it says chat on the web app or on the mobile app while you're watching this and give them some congratulations when we um, see who has won. So the first award uh, that we'll be giving out is the service provider of the year award. And this award is given to an individual or an organization that provides support services for UAV operations, so such as training, maintenance, or software, to an exceptional standard. So it's not given to those that operate the UAVs, it's given to those that support those operations. And in terms of the process, nominations were able to be made by any Aviation New Zealand member, and the winner was decided by the UAVNZ executive committee. And I will now uh, hand over to Kevin uh, to announce who the winner is and read out the citation for the winner. Thanks, Isaac. Um, it's a pleasure, pleasure to announce the um, service provider of the year award is Grant Wilson. So, um, Grant Wilson started selling GoPros in 2012, and he made a name for great advice and service of his company, New Zealand Helmet um, Cams. In 2013, he saw an opportunity as there was really was no one in Auckland that's selling and servicing a budding new drone industry. Grant quickly grew into the industry name of who to deal with, whether you're a recreational or a seasonal or seasoned professional. Grant over the next couple of years continued to offer experience uh, and service second to none New Zealand wide. Seven years on, Grant and his company Drone Depot, started in 2015, is the industry leader for small, medium and large companies that require great advice through to sales, after sales service and even repairs. Grant has championed safety standards for servicing for part 102 operators providing training advice to all his customers. A fair chunk of the commercial sector using small to medium drones in the DGI and other brands rely on Grant as he doesn't let anyone down. I've come to rely on Drone Depot and Grant Wilson and there has been times Grant's phone has rung at the wrong hour when the tech here let everyone down and Grant was always there to assist. I recall one time Grant was in Vegas or Hawaii when there was a drone in bits, Grant made all the stress go away. I was make no hesitation with being proud that I was the only purchase and maintained drones from Grant Wilson and Drone Depot. As a commercial operator, there is really no one like Grant Wilson. Other companies sell drones to Grant Wilson. It's about customer service and the drone sale is almost a byproduct. Thank you. Thank you. And that uh, citation was by Richard Milner, wasn't it, Kevin? Correct. Sorry. Yeah. Richard Milner was the citation. Yes. Okay. Now, um, as I said, because this is a virtual conference, we're not going to invite Grant in to give some sort of speech or anything like that. Um, but you can find his user profile on either the web app or the mobile app. And please send him uh, your congratulations on winning this award. And this um, plaque here, it's virtual right now, but we are actually having real plaques that look exactly like these uh, made for each of our recipients, and that will be posted to them in the weeks following the conference. So Grant will be getting the real deal to hang on his wall or wherever he wants to put it. 
So our next award is the Operator of the Year Award. This award is given to an individual or organization that demonstrates an exceptional level of professionalism within the industry with regard uh, to their UAV operations. And much like the last award, any Aviation New Zealand member could nominate someone for the award or an organization for the award and the winner was decided by the UAVNZ Executive Committee. And I'll now hand over to Kevin to announce the winner. And the winner, uh, the operator of the year award is to Aerial Moving Camera. And here's a citation by Murray Milne. In awarding this to Aerial Moving ca Camera, we recognize the very professional approach to the screen industry shown by Sam Peacock and Ryan Haste and their team. Sam and Ryan have developed their own heavy lift seminar drone for carrying the largest seminar cameras and film lights. They have earned their respect for providing high precision UAV flights along with high levels of safety for most of the international and local film and TV productions around New Zealand. Thank you. And um, as before, um, if you can send your congratulations to Sam and Ryan, uh, you can see uh, the user profiles that they look like here, um, and they will be receiving one of these plaques as well. Our next award is the UAV Pilot of the Year Award. Now, this recognizes individual UAV pilots that demonstrate high levels of skill when flying as well as demonstrating professionalism as operators. Nominations can be made by any Aviation New Zealand member and the winner is decided again by the UAV uh, NZ Executive Committee. And I'll hand back over to uh, Kevin for announcing this year's winner. Thanks. Um, the, the UAV Pilot of the Year Award goes to Paul Short. Uh, citation by Chris Jackson. I've known Paul for many years. The first time I met Paul, he was shown off RTH on a DGI Phantom, which flew straight into the top of the tree, proceeded to rain down leaves for the next 20 minutes as it refused to disarm. A few years later, and we have Paul displaying world-class piloting skills. High quality videos have become the norm for Paul. Tight, smooth, flying, with no positioning assistance and all and done in compliance and regulations and with a strong safety effort. Few people can appreciate, let alone replicate, the amount of talent and then combine it with a lot of practice in pulling off flights like this. Well done. Right, and uh, again, please send your congratulations to uh, Paul Short. Here is what his profile looks like and he will be receiving one of these plaques in the coming weeks. Now, the next award is the Leadership Award. And this recognizes leaders in the industry that advocate for the sector and are working to move the sector into the future. And the same process was followed with nominations from uh, any Aviation New Zealand member and the winner decided by the UAVNZ Executive Committee. I'll now hand over to Kevin to announce the winner for this category. Okay, thank you. Um, it's a pleasure to announce the Leadership Award is, goes to Isaac Henderson. Here's a citation by Chris Jackson. Isaac Henderson stepped into the role of Chair of UAVNZ and has taken an arguably intellectual organisation with few members into what it is today. It is steering into what New Zealand UAV industry desperately needs. A representative body of our FOIA industry, which its members can be proud of being associated with. Isaac's nomination for this award says a great deal. We debated if it was the right approach to nominate our chair for the award, question mark. Would this be seen as nepotism? Would it be controversial? Is it appropriate? Isaac has been given this award from a field of very deserving individuals, not because of nepotism, it's a spite hole. Isaac has drive to solve the industry's many issues, 
take leadership where needed in meetings, use the various skill sets of the executive committee to the best of their abilities, and provides a, a fantastic example of how to sit in numerous meetings and debate, often heated, issues using solid arguments whilst remaining cool-headed. Isaacs volunteers an extraordinary amount of time and effort into the industry, and it does it in a way that the UAV NZ executive and industry can be proud of. Congratulations. Uh, um, thank you very much. Um, you know, I was, uh, I'm very proud to uh, win this award. I can actually speak to this one, um, but the thing I'd like to highlight is my executive committee kicked me out of the meeting um, when they decided to give me this award. So there was no nepotism involved, but I greatly appreciate the, uh, the honor um, that uh, the committee would like to give me this award. Um, and you are welcome to send me uh, your congratulations as well, if you, if you like. We do have um, two other awards before we move into the photography awards though, um, and both of them are the same award uh, for this category, a safety award. Uh, we decided that we might give out um, as many as was appropriate in a given year, and we may also give them out in between conferences. And a safety award is given to um, individuals and organizations that make an exceptional contribution towards the safety of drone operations throughout the year. So um, not the same process was followed, nominations from Aviation New Zealand members and the winner decided by the UAVNZ Executive Committee. <clears throat> the first, uh, and, and we're giving up two awards, the first winner of a safety award is, please Kevin. Is Chris Jackson. Uh, a citation by Dan Morton. Chris Jackson, Greg Jackson is well known and respected in the industry, and many of us will have had the pleasure of working with him. He is a pilot, certifier, engineer, examiner, educator, amongst many other titles, and has roles and positions that he holds. Throughout all of these roles, Chris goes out of his way to build others' knowledge for not only experienced pilots, but also new pilots coming into the industry. The time and dedication that Chris puts in to providing education and sharing his knowledge is, an excep is an exceptional and shows overwhelming dedication in promoting technical, engineering and operational safety. This technical and operational safety knowledge is second to none and plays an important part in driving the industry forward in New Zealand. Congratulations. As with the other winners, please send your congratulations to uh, Chris Jackson and he will be receiving one of these plaques for his wall in the coming weeks. Uh, we do have a uh, second uh, winner though, please, Kevin. Yes, and the second winner of the safety award is the Royal New Zealand Air Force. Um, I have a citation by Rick Watson and Isaac Henderson. The reason for giving this award is to recognize the RNZIS role in the development of a flight advisor as a tool for improving situational awareness and mitigating the risk of mid-air collisions in low level airspace. New Zealand's commercial UAV industry are heavy users of low level airspace, much like the RNZAF. So tools aimed at mitigating the risk of operating in this space are highly beneficial to our members in the wider professional UAV community. Flight Advisor is a powerful tool for the professional UAV operator and a huge step forward for aviation safety for integrating both crewed and uncrewed operations in AOTRR New Zealand. Congratulations. Congratulations to Royal New Zealand Air Force. And while there are obviously a number of people who are involved in this particular project, um, I have been advised that the person to send your congratulations to uh, for being the flight advisor architect is uh, Andrew Day. So if you could please send your congratulations uh, to him, I'm sure he would appreciate it. And thank you, Kevin, for um, uh, announcing the winners and reading out the citations. Uh, we now move on to our best UAV image capture awards um, to try and involve the wider UAV community, not necessarily just the commercial and professional operators. And this award is given for the best UAV image capture within the last year. 
we ran two categories, a still image category and a short video category, which uh, where the video had to be uh, less than one minute long to be eligible. Entries were received via our Facebook page and we ran a Facebook promotion on that page to make sure it got out to a wide audience. And the entries were adjudicated by Murray Moon, who is a professional cinematographer, but he's also one of our executive committee members. And uh, I now, um, uh, over these next sessions, I will be uh, saying who the finalists are, uh, giving a description of their work, and then I'll bring up their work and I'll be asking um, Murray to describe uh, what was particularly good about that uh, work. So um, you ready to go with that one, Murray? Yep, ready. Cool. So um, we selected three finalists for each category. We invited those uh, finalists to the conference, gave them complimentary tickets for being uh, finalists. So all of them are in attendance, which is good. So they don't know uh, who has won either. So this is, this is going to be uh, an exciting moment for, for them. The first um, finalist in the still image category uh, was uh, Peter Henare. Uh, the, this is his description. The image was taken of Taranaki to Monga or Mount Taranaki from a Mavic 3 edited on Lightroom and flares from LS distortions. And here is uh, Peter's photo. So uh, Murray, could you describe what was particularly uh, good about this photo? Yeah, I said it was a, a lovely image, um, very pleasing symmetrical composition. Um, I wouldn't have known that the flares have been added in post, and um, it was in my my uh, my top group when I um, selected through them. Okay, so congratulations to uh, Peter Henare on becoming a finalist, and you can um, send him uh, any comments about his uh, his photo um, uh, via chat as with um, the awards recipients. Our second finalist uh, is Ethan Van Staden. Um, his description of the shot is, I shot this at Aramoana Beach in Dunedin one Saturday morning. It had to have been the biggest swell of the summer and I couldn't resist getting the drone up to get this top down shot. It was shot on the DJI Mavic Air 2. And here is Ethan's photo. Would you like to uh, uh, explain what's particularly good about this photo, Murray? Yes, again, I, I love the uh, symmetry and simpleness of the, of the framing. Um, I also like the fact that he'd waited until the sun was low, so that it's backlighting through that wave and picking up the color of the water. Um, brings out all the, yeah, the color and um, yeah, just a very nice, simple graphic composition. A great shot. Right, so congratulations to Ethan on um, becoming a finalist. And our third finalist is uh, Giuliano Baby. Um, and this is his description, Kaipara Harbor. This photo was taken on a trip of mine to do some architectural photography work for a client here in Auckland. As I always do for this type of work, I spend one day just observing the light so that the next day I know what to photograph and at what time of the day. The photo sent was taken on the day I scheduled my shooting. And when I woke up, I noticed that the light and the colors were special. Cold and with low fog, solar rays started to appear. That's how I decided to lift my DJI Mavic 2 Pro drone. And I had the opportunity to take this image. And here is Giuliano's image. Do you like to describe what's particularly good about this one, Murray? Yep, I wrote that it was a great use of low early light to show the contours of the land. Um, it was a perfect exposure because it's quite a tricky thing at that time of morning. Um, I'm, I'm suspecting that the sky has been added as a as a, a post or um, or an additional image that's been comped together because I don't think you get that sky and that sun at the same frame, but it's very nicely put together um, and I think probably the colors have been amplified but yeah it was um, it was one of my favorite shots well done. All right, well done to Giuliano but now we get to announce the winner um, so we, we don't actually have a, a drum roll but if you like you can uh, you can do one at home or in your office uh, but the winner for the still image category uh, was 
uh, Giuliano Baby. Uh, congratulations. Um, that was the third finalist, the last image you saw. Uh, you can send your congratulations to Giuliano in the same way as the other um, uh, awards recipients. And Giuliano will be getting one of these plaques made up and sent to him uh, in the coming weeks. Well done once again, Giuliano. Now, um, I will need to share my sound for this one. So um, we now move on to the short video category. So these were videos of no longer than one minute. And our first finalist for the award was Paul Short. Uh, and this was his description. We were presented with the challenge of creating a one shot fly through and challenging environment of New Zealand bush. This led to the design and construction of a custom airframe and payload specifically for this project. The BMPCC 4K with remote iris control handled the harsh light well, and overall I'm super happy with how this project came together. The pre-roll cinema version uh, also had a beautiful Dolby 5.1 surround mists that really helped bring it all to life. The airframe was an in-house designed X4 cine lifter, and the camera was a BMPCC 4K with Lawoa 7.5 millimeter with custom focus slash iris control system. Uh, and hopefully this all works, but uh, this is uh, Paul's um, video. To protect our region's environment, we get closer. We see where it's healthy and where it needs a hand. Even this giant forest is incredibly fragile. The closer we get to our precious Taonga, the more we can do. Greater Wellington is helping native plants and animals survive in 43,000 hectares at key sites across the region. We listen to the land. Whakarongo tato ki te whenua. Right, and perhaps while that's up, um, Murray, could you describe uh, what was particularly impressive about that video? Uh, my viewing, it was a, a jumpy playback I don't know if you had it any better or if it's just what I was receiving anyway um really well done I uh I still don't know how they managed to fly through all of that bush without collecting all the foliage and bringing the craft down um very creative use of a drone I thought and very well executed and for those that were wondering the uh, BMPCC uh, it's a black magic camera recording in 4k and that lower 7.5 is is a very wide angle with very minimal distortion. So yes, a, um, a, a drone that can carry that size and weight of camera um, obviously had to be purposely built. So um, great work. All right, thank you, um, Murray. Uh, and now, whoops, uh, our second finalist in the short video category, um, a slightly different uh, uh, type of recording, uh, but it's from Chris McDonald, and this is his description. Uh, from my video, you'll see me chasing at Hampton Downs racetrack at the start of the D1 NZ champion season. A simple, a small clip of uh, some chasing cars, uh, smoke clouds, and the drones used were Diatone Roma F5 and FPV quadcopter, and the camera used was a GoPro Hero 10 Black. Now play Chris McDonald's video. You can pretend it don't miss me. You can pretend it don't care. Why you want to be this kiss me? Oh, what a shame I'm not there. You can pretend it don't miss me. Right. 
And perhaps now, Murray, you can uh, uh, outline what was particularly impressive about that video. Huh. I will lay right a very brave use of drone. Um, I guess we've seen videos like that on the internet, but uh, I'm almost certain that it takes a lot of practice and a fair amount of courage to uh, fly a drone that close behind racing cars. Um, but it just shows you what drones are, are capable of now that they can place a camera in a, in a situation that you could just never put a camera in that situation before. So um, yeah, great example of, uh, of creative drone use, I thought. Okay, thank you. And uh, well done, Chris McDonald on that submission. And the third finalist in the short video category uh, is Lee Hunt. Now, uh, this is his description. This video was made for Kenepuru Homes and involved flying 11 different captures and then applying some fairly detailed post-processing that allows us to create the hyperlapse showing the project's progress over the course of a year. It's always interesting to compose footage and picture how the site is going to look in the future from greenfield to finished construction. Despite flying the same track each time, Given GPS inaccuracies, there was often a two plus meter difference in flight paths. So as with previous hyperlapses, the bulk of the work is actually in post-processing, trying to remove the effects of parallax and gimbal orientation. And we'll now watch Lee's uh, submission. And uh, now, Murray, could you explain what was particularly impressive about that video? Yeah, again, uh, I don't know if everyone's seeing the same thing, but it's very um, jerky playback, so it's not really showing, from what I'm seeing anyway, how clever that was. Um, yes, again, very creative use of the drone, very well executed. Um, a difficult thing to do, as they said, trying to fly a, a repetitive path over such a, a long time frame. But again, it just shows uh, yet another great creative use of uh, drone capabilities. Okay, uh, thank you, Murray. And um, now we can announce the winner. So you can uh, you know, give your drum rolls at home or in your office or wherever you are right now. Um, and I'm pleased to announce that uh, Paul Short is the uh, winner. That was the first finalist uh, in the uh, short video category. Um, so you can send your congratulations again to uh, Paul, his profile, and uh, you can, um, and he will be receiving one of these plaques in the near future. And uh, thank you very much, Murray, for going through all of the submissions and suggesting who the finalist should be to the executive committee. That was much appreciated uh, for your time spent on that. So um, now, uh, uh, and so final uh, congratulations again to all of the awards recipients today. And I'd also like to acknowledge SPS Automation for sponsoring the awards that we've given out today. Uh, and I'd like to move on to my closing address and it is brief, don't worry, you'll, you'll be able to, to, to get home on time. Um, but a, a few notices really uh, from uh, a UAVNZ perspective. So the first is that we are having our annual general meeting on the 29th of November at 7.30 via Zoom. It's open to all paid up members uh, and we will be voting on whether to ratify a new code of conduct, which I uh, announced uh, at an earlier session today. And we'll also be electing executive committee members. And my plea is that please get in touch if you're interested in getting more involved, whether it's becoming a member whether perhaps you might want to run uh, to become an executive committee member. An industry body and a professional body only works when member organizations get involved. So if you care about professionalism uh, within the UAV industry, please uh, do reach out to me following this conference. I also have another really uh, exciting announcement to make, which should add value to all of our current members 
and for any future members, which is that uh, UAVNZ uh, has uh, now uh, got an executive officer on board beginning in the new year. And that person is uh, Richard Milner. Um, and that position will be shared with the New Zealand Helicopter Association. So 50-50 between UAVNZ and the New Zealand Helicopter Association as divisions of Aviation New Zealand. Uh, we wanted to wait until the end of the conference because Richard was presenting in a couple of sessions with his current hat on, but in the new year, he will be working uh, full time for Aviation New Zealand and half of that time will be spent on UAVNZ initiatives. So we plan to up our advocacy work and we plan to up our professionalization initiatives now that we have a dedicated resource. And I'm sure the Helicopter Association will also uh, get much out of that. Uh, I, many on this call will know who Richard is, but for those who don't, Richard has been involved in the sector for many years. He's been on the UAVNZ Executive Committee longer than I have. He's probably the longest serving committee member at this point in time. Uh, he's the chief pilot and training manager at Fly UAV, but he's also a very experienced helicopter pilot. And so really you couldn't have a better person for uh, doing that joint role between UAVNZ and the New Zealand Helicopter Association. So please congratulate Richard on his new position and welcome him uh, to the fold. I'd also like to thank our student volunteers. So those who have joined our sessions will have seen UAVNZ1, that's Alice Yu, our intern. Uh, she's also in um, her, I believe, final semester of the Bachelor of Aviation. UAVNZ2 is Ali Hassan Al Janabi. Um, he's recently finished his studies. Uh, UAVNZ3 was Will Brightwell, and UAVNZ4 was Josh Madgwick. So all of these uh, students um, uh, uh, might be you know, applying for, uh, for jobs or internships in the near future. So please keep an eye out for these, uh, these names. We couldn't have had a conference without them and we're very grateful for their efforts. I'd also like to thank our organizing committee, uh, Chris Jackson, Dan Morton, John Nicholson, Rick Watson, Andrew Nicholson, Alice Yu and myself who have helped put all the different sessions together uh, to make this conference work. I'd like to thank our speakers and moderators. In the end, we had 48 speakers contributing to the many discussions we had. They all gave their time freely uh, to contribute towards what were really exceptional discussions, certainly in the sessions I attended. So thank you very much to our speakers and also our moderators for keeping things running smoothly. And I'd like to thank our attendees. Uh, we had some nice curly questions, which is exactly what we want, um, but also, uh, I thank everyone for taking an interest in the sector, whether you're involved in the sector, you're thinking about being involved in the sector, or you came along just for curiosity. Uh, we appreciate it when people take interest in what is happening in this exciting uh, part of the aviation domain. I'd like to thank our gold sponsors for financially supporting the conference, AVCRM, FernTech, Fly Freely, Mass University School of Aviation, and SPS Automation were our gold sponsors. And if you haven't already done so, please check out their exhibitor booths on the conference app. The conference app should remain open uh, for three months following the conference. So you can touch base with our exhibitors following the conference. And I'd also like to thank our silver sponsors and our bronze sponsors. And again, I would encourage you to go and check out their exhibitor booths to see if uh, they are providing anything of interest to you. But again, they have financially supported our conference and it would not have been possible without their generous support. Uh, now also please provide uh, feedback. Um, there are three polls that uh, should have opened up during the session. Uh, you can click on those, please provide feedback. There should also be a post event survey going out. We'd really appreciate you completing that so we know where we can improve uh, next time. And if you have any direct feedback, please uh, feel free to send it through to me as chair as well. And so with that note, thank you all for coming. It's been an excellent day and uh, we hope to potentially welcome you at another conference in the coming years. Thank you very much and uh, goodbye. Thank you, Isaac, for all your efforts for today. Well done.
Yeah, I'd just like to say a note of thanks on behalf of you, AV and Z, because I know it's a tremendous amount of work by you personally to bring this all together. So uh, we all appreciate it. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. All right. We'll let everyone get on their days then. Thank you uh, very much. I admire your energy right from nine o'clock to now. <laughs> that's, <laughs> why you get, that's why you got that award too. You're a dynamo, <laughs> Isaac. A worthy recipient, please. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Isaac. Well, right. Thanks, John. Bye, all. Bye.